Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. I'm Jenny Hall. Thanks for joining me for another card making tutorial. Today I'm showing a technique that I'm calling spritzing the watercolor pencils and I have Daisy Delight stamp set to use on watercolor paper. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. There are a couple of different options that anyone can use for stamping onto watercolor paper. Typically I take this ink and I will heat emboss it with clear embossing powder. But for today's card purposes, I did not do that. Instead, I chose to quickly stamp out the daisy image onto the smooth side of the watercolor paper and I took this on the road to go. This is another one that I am making in a different kind of colorway so that I could show you exactly how I perform the coloring. Keeping in mind as I'm coloring, I am going to not use the water brush to spread the color around. Instead, I'm going to use the stamping spritzer. Adding water in a spritzing mist is going to activate the colors from the watercolor pencil and allow the color to melt. The intensity of the pencil that you apply to the paper is going to determine how deep the color will be. This principle works really good with ink. It also especially works great with pencil because pencil is an easy way that you can apply color to a specific area. The one that I colored at my son's therapy session has a blue background and I used rich razzleberry and I believe I mixed in a little bit of the melon mambo to go with it. But I stamped the daisies in exactly the same way. You'll get a look at that panel in just a few moments. For this particular one that I'm coloring at the moment, I used calypso coral for the background. This is the stamping spritzer and when I use it, I always try to have a tissue or a paper towel handy. As you can see, when the watercolor pencils are activated, the movement starts immediately. Unfortunately, I did not allow enough time for the panel that I had just stamped and colored to dry. I did use a heat gun before I colored it, but sometimes no matter what you do, it's just not going to be enough time to dry. So I changed my plans right in the middle of making the video and I decided that I was only going to allow a small portion of the watercolor panel to be shown. It is a bit muddled and drippy looking and I left this in the video to demonstrate to everybody that we all have sometimes ideas that just really don't work out or we can make a great plan and things just happen. So this watercolor panel did not come out looking the way that I wanted it to look, but I still want to use it in a project. So one way is to just limit the exposure of the panel to the front of the card. There's a die set that I have been working with called Colorful Seasons. It's the set that has the lawn chair and the cherry blossoms and the tree branch, but it also has an edge die that gives a scallop look. So if you see the right hand side of this front card panel, I have cut away with that die from Colorful Seasons. I did not have the video camera running whenever I did this, although unfortunately um, I thought I had it running. So I apologize for not being able to show you that portion. I will make another video very soon that shows exactly how you can use that die. It's a very perfect edge and I like how Stampin' Up! has actually measured that the scallop edges are going to begin and end evenly right at the five and a half mark. And that's typically the size that we use here in the United States for our card size. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial. I hope that you feel like you're not alone whenever things go wrong with your card making. Know that we all go through this. 
and we still come out okay in the end. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day!